Hola, everybody. Big welcome back. Today, I am doing a little uh, DJI Mini 2 uh, flying out to a ship video. And I gave you the kind of the telemetry screen or whatever, so you can kind of follow along if you're watching on a large enough screen. Um, overall, I uh, kind of give you a heads up. Basically, a, a pretty non-eventful flight, which is a good thing. When I say eventful, um, we got a lot to see, but I mean, nothing went wrong. And at no point did I actually lose signal. Uh, I should mention, though, when you're watching the video, you're going to see once we're over at the ship, we will um, get a bit of a, um, a weak signal. But remember, I am sitting in my truck flying today. Uh, so that's what's up. And then I will mention that switching to sport mode myself, just like everybody else I watch on here, when you go to short or sport mode, rather, you get a little bit of a jump in the gimbal, unfortunately. And it just seems to be, you know, the uh, whatever part of, you know, what I don't know, whatever it is of the beast, they say. Anyway, the nature of the beast. Um, so it's unfortunate because if you were actually trying to achieve, you know, some kind of cinematic whatever, um, you, you would have screwed it up. And then also, furthermore, when we get to the ship, you're going to see that... Um, having it in sport mode drives the uh, gimbal kind of sideways like uh same as the forward motion i see it on other people's videos so i'm almost wondering if this is just part of the design so it doesn't overwork the gimbal um and being that everybody seems to do it as soon as you try to slide fly, fly sideways in sport mode um you get this roll and some of you may know from before, there we go, um, when I flew my DJI Mavic Pro um, in the same harbor, but closer to the bridge that you'll see in the distance in a minute, um, I was flying it on a day where we had like 70 kilometer an hour gusts and like 50 sustained um, winds. And ultimately, I like overworked my gimbal that day, keeping it level. And so I have no way to confirm or deny on this, but my suspicion is that they've just built in some kind of like an angle lock. Being that I see everybody's drone doing the exact same thing, it's almost like instead of fighting the wind, it just holds on that angle. And because doing that on my Mavic Pro, I actually like burned out the um, something on the little gimbal board for where the the ribbon cable. So I ended up having to replace the ribbon cable. And my instinct was that I had just overworked it because I'd never crashed that drone. Um, if you haven't saw that flight, I'll try to remember to put it in the um, description below because it's a it's a really interesting flight where I just by the you know the skin of my teeth managed to save the drone from flying away to the lake. It actually took off from me and couldn't fight the wind and. I managed to save it, so it's a really cool flight. You can feel free to check that out. And if you like ships, this is one of probably about a dozen flights around ships. So feel free to uh, check those out as well. And I guess I will mention that one of my very first flights with my Mavic Pro was from this location, flying from the park I took off from there, flying across those factories in the distance. And that was from my range test. And I am fully figuring I will probably do the same on this drone uh, but it will have to be on a windless morning I don't um, generally like to send my drone on suicide missions so I will not be uh, you know testing range on a uh, windy day you got to make sure that it's going to be able to do its flight home so here I am just kind of screwing around I was planning on making a more of a smooth video out of this footage and you know kind of putting the pieces together and just making like you know a little one or two minute clip but um it's not that great of a video so i just decided to use it like this instead and if you guys like we can talk about video quality of the drone um it is 4k and overall i'm quite happy with it this was filmed at about 7 30 in the morning and on a kind of a gloomy day, obviously you can see from the uh, from the background and stuff when I was showing the sky. And for the most part, I'm happy with the drone's camera quality. 
but I will say that uh, once again, the video, it, it does have some noise in it. I was mentioning this in, a, in another video and it's not the brightest of days. And unfortunately here where I live, we've just had a real, um, I don't know, I guess I want to say a shitty assortment of weather since getting this drone. We, um, we don't get many breaks in the weather. It's been windy and, um, and overcast. Like, so I haven't had an opportunity to really get this out on a beautiful windless sunny day yet. Um, but hopefully, you know what I mean? It's uh, one thing I find is that whenever you get a new drone and I'm sure the drone community, you guys will agree with me here is that when you get a new drone, mother nature will always throw her worst at you. That's just what she likes to do. Um, here, we're going to uh, see some of the workers on the ship just kind of for uh, while we're having a look here. I've uh, actually flown over to a few ships and had the guys wave at me and whatever. On this particular flight, I don't believe anyone actually even noticed the drone. Uh, so it's pretty quiet and I kept a, a good bit of distance. And unfortunately, I didn't think to hit the... Uh, the zoom in button, not that we needed to spy on them, but I just mean in general, it would have been nice to kind of at least press it for a second and see exactly, uh, you know, I like, I like demoing that to, uh, see that function. I really like that that ability is built right in so that you can, um, obviously get that close up shot without getting too close. And here we go. I think we're going to maybe go to a flyover around. Oh, I know what we're doing here. We're going to check it out from the side and stuff. And I was very tempted to fly in front of the bridge, but I, uh, I've never done that. Or maybe I did once, but I always worry that there's like going to be a cable there or something. And so I end up deciding not to uh, fly low. Like it would have been cool to kind of fly low looking at the, uh, the bridge, but Oh, what else should I mention? Um, one of the things I was going to say was that the I've had numerous times where people have uh, commented about stuff like power lines and interference um, and from the ship, like when my one drone I had where I almost had a flyaway from the uh, out on the pier. It was a different flight than the one I was talking about earlier. It was a completely other another flight. Um, and people were talking about interference. But I'll say I personally, I don't believe I've ever had like an electronic interference with my drone. Um, I seem to fly around like, you know, their radars and antennas and all that just fine. I've got a flight on my channel um, from my buddy HT flying his drone right up to like within like, you know, several feet of a huge radio antenna that's 300 meters high or whatever. Um, no signal loss at all. Uh, but this morning I was watching some videos on YouTube of someone that uh, their drone went down in a field. It looked like it was maybe in Europe or something like that. And uh, the commentator for the video was saying that they believed it was because there was power lines there. But I, I personally have never had low signal where I'm like, oh, I think that's because the power line was admit, emitting anything. Um, I don't think the lines themselves uh, emit you know, uh, electronic interference. The only thing I would not want to try would be flying near electrical boxes, I guess. Um, back when I was a kid, I had a metal detector and I decided to put it to one of those big green boxes on the side of the road, the hydro box. And it completely fried my metal detector. It never worked again. So I'm pretty sure those have something like that, but I don't think lines themselves do. And these, there's these guys doing like a circle jerk on the side there or whatever. Um, I, uh, I think working on a ship looks like it'd probably be kind of fun touring the world, although maybe not the greatest for, uh, you know, family life, but I enjoy flying around these ships. And here I just kind of doing a little pan around a little quicker than I should have. I probably should have done that a little slower. We're just trying to get a nice little look around and then we're going to get a nice distant shot here. And yeah, if you guys have flown around ships, by all means, let me know uh, in the comments below. Um, 
if you if you enjoy ship videos, uh, please also let me know that, and I'll keep making them. I've got pretty good access to flying around these ships as they um, are often out here. This is like uh, a little harbor off the side of Lake Ontario, um, and it's part of like the St. Lawrence Seaway shipping way or whatever, um, which is like traverse the uh, the Great Lakes. And this ship needs a paint job, but they do boat repairs in here, so maybe they'll uh, they'll dock it for the winter and work on it. I can't really say what it's here for. And there we go with the gimbal again. And I think I had dropped her back into sport mode there. Not positive. And the the production software I use to do this on my laptop is VideoPad, which I really like this software, but unfortunately. It's a very low quality on the preview window. When I'm doing my narration for you guys, I can't see my, I can't read any of the numbers on that little screen on the left there. So I can't even see if I put it into sport mode. Um, but when you guys are watching it, you'll know because you'll see it clearly. But uh, overall thoughts after a few weeks with this uh, drone um, is the most important one is that Mother Nature hates me and has made it so that I can barely even fly anyway. But other than that, I I really like the drone for what it is. I still preferred my DJI Mavic Pro. Um, I never even bothered getting a Mavic Pro 2 because of the, uh, the drone regulations in Canada. And quickly, we'll touch on that. Um, it's very important for people to understand that here in Canada, you can fly beyond line of sight on this particular drone. Anything under 250 grams is not considered a drone under Canadian law at this point. I've had many conversations back and forth with Transport Canada because I get a lot of people that like to comment that, oh, you can't fly that far or this high. A hundred percent I can. I would not be putting this up if I had any doubt in it. Um, this is not classified as a drone and under the CARS regulations or CARS or whatever and as such, there's you can fly, and it doesn't it doesn't matter. I always like to point that out, just because people often from USA will comment saying stuff about United States regulations, and in the states, I know that you can't fly beyond line of sight, which to me is just absurd because like the entire FPV hobby, um, flying in and around the trees and buildings and all that relies on you going out of sight with glasses on and you there's no way to maintain visual even with spotters so um i think the rules are stupid anyway max height i get but that's about it anyways guys thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll subscribe and leave a like see you next time